Martin Halgren. Now, Martin Halgren was sorry, what country was this? I had a brain fart. I think it was Germany. No, it was Sweden. So Sweden. Uh, just for anybody's reference sake, it was a smaller GT of 36 players. Uh, Vikings games battle for Hal Valheim. He was using the ITC scoring. So in that, I actually prepared a presentation of his list for easier viewing pleasure, which was suggested to me by the chat anyways. So let's take a look at Martin's list. This was the almighty dread mob sitting at 1995 point. We have the one and only Big Mac with Smokey Gubbins. Yes, guys, you've seen it. The Big Mac has finally made his appearance running through walls with some bricks of boys because we have alongside him a war boss and the smoky gubbins enhancement on that big mac with a 20 man unit of boys riding in a battle wagon let's get a shout out for that that battle wagon did have a zap gun and hard case so that was great to see uh, of course there's a chance that he put big shock attack guns in there but we have three big mech with shock attack guns one of them had get finder goggles to ignore light cover uh, we don't see the push the button faster i think that's because inter according to your interpretation you have to roll for both of them and sometimes it's just you just really need to get sustained sixes on the luda so you can get the volume you need to actually put some saves on people uh, then we have a boar boss like we said but zagra wartsnaga alongside a 20-man unit of gretchen see that there at the bottom of the screen uh, I love that they're battle line, right? And I love that this has more. This has four units of Gretchen, one of those being a 20 man unit or 22 man unit. Uh, that's great to see. Uh, I think that was a factor for Dread Mob having just more Grots taking advantage of the battle line. So, battle line, we have the boys and four units of Grots, two trucks for the transports, one battle wagon with the big Zappa, Gork Knot for his point efficiency, in my opinion, just because he's cheaper than the Mork Knot and he's punching volume of the shots, which is something you kind of lack surprisingly. In dread mob you lack against like hordes and such like that the three units of ludas all were 10 man units with two spanners each having the custom mega blasters so i'm totally in love with the rockets but that's just my opinion if you're going for the d6 damage hey you just go for it everybody loves d6 damage when it goes good uh but it sucks when it goes bad i just guess i love to go for just a nice solid round three damage uh for the reliability so but it is actually three flat shots i believe with the custom mega cannon too uh last but not least we have three mech guns each with the smasher guns yes smasher guns in the mech gun unit has made a comeback now there is a slight chance that the big mech did go alongside the mech guns uh and give them smoky gubbins and allow them to move to terrain i don't know for the fact because i didn't speak to morgan halvern but i just have a feeling that it was probably a matchup dependent call right some games you could decide you want boys to be able to run through screens some games you needed your mech guns to get through terrain uh, we do know this is itc possibly wtc terrain so we know there were some thin walls that maybe he could try to get through. Uh, very careful when the measuring for that. And then two units of Storm Boy. So like always, we like to go over uh, his win path. So for Mountain Harvin's win path, he did tie his third game, by the way. So let's go over his first game. So in his first game, he went against, let me zoom in on this so you guys can actually see. He went against Space Marines with the Gladius Task Force. We have the Apothecary Biologist with Fire Discipline, Blade Guard Ancient, Lieutenant, uh, as the warlord then we have intercessors one unit of aggressors with the bolt storm goblins uh, another unit of assault two units of assault intercessors with jetpacks simply five man units a blade guard veteran squad maxed out in scepters with the plasma exterminators this is more for ooh, maybe i'm getting trucks shooting them down but for the majority of the time you're kind of just going with them against uh you could drop and get the initiative and try to kill something but so many times that could just go wrong and you lose a very nice effective unit so we have one two units of scout two units of ballista dreads i think these guys are just underwhelming in the orc matchup their frag cannons don't really do great because they're only strength four uh then their last cannons just slow volume even against the uh the, the battle wagon you're not doing great and his data sheet ability you know hopes for your damage we have the reaper um which is good you know for the most part if you're looking for the anti-infantry then we have a land raider redeemer which is fantastic and a repulsor executioner so he's going for the transport long range anti-tank firepower um which is actually something you don't really love to see as a dread mob player yet it always comes down to can i kill the rest of your list and scoring potential when you have 30 Ludas, you can destroy all of these wound, two wound units that are T4. Um, 
people wonder how that minus one AP gets anywhere when there's cover all over the game. That's because just making people take three up saves is something you must learn to love as an arc player. If you could put those three up saves on people, damage two, that's how you get the kills through. I'm telling you, uh, that goes for melee and even for shooting. That's why the loot is shine. Love to see it taking out the scouts. Overwatching is fantastic. People still have to play the mission, still have to play the primary. Uh, and you have the 20 man units of boys to just take on the blade guard, stay in the middle of the table, gunk up anything that wants to go there. So not surprised at all by that win. Orcs just do quite well, as we've seen earlier into space marines it's one of our winningest matchup then in his second matchup we have eldari uh we have zed with a friendly tournament saturday bringing gaz and bully and that's oh that's a point right there you know i'll get into that in a second don't let me forget that and thanks slap shot uh yeah we're going over dread mobs hey you need to start buying yeah i feel you on that you're like what do i need to buy oh ludas that seems the answer is ludas and last but not least shout out to mark perry which we're hoping to have on the show later uh maybe in next week or something to go over his amazing list that he did really well with and was very unique which you know i like to bring you guys the most unique list the most fun list um that way you can feel like there's more to your world than just mega knobs so in this matchup we have eldari so as an eldari matchup we have an artark way leaper the avatar kane and shout out to mark perry farseer skyrunner fugan and solitaire okay this is somewhat typical eldar list uh you need the boys to get back up you need the avatar king because he's fantastic and let's see what else you have a falcon falcon's all right it's that you really just want his bright lances and his cannons for the value of his shots fire dragons are their new version of i'm gonna get out and destroy you which is does he have transports i don't see it but fire dragons are still pretty solid rangers shadow specter shadow specter shout runner swooping hawks warwalker 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 deceitfully actually durable um Unless you're doing big shells for bigger gets on them, then they're not anymore, right? Warp Spider, Warp Spider. Uh, this is another unit that's two wounds that's typically is actually quite annoying, and you're not really getting a good trade. In this case, you actually are with the Warp Spiders. Not to mention, Big Shock Attack Gun is in things like this. So War Walkers are getting plastered in this kind of matchup. Shadow Specters as well. They're low uh toughness the gorka not still running around the table it's really interesting to see that how good this dread mob list did we have the of course all of the grots to run up to the middle of the table take oc primary and then the boys the son to bog, bog down something like the avatar of kane when he comes out until he can get isolated and shot off the table it's interesting how um when you really think about it ludas do great and then you start bringing boys onto the list which is i think something you really really need for your um dread mob list and it's really interesting because a lot of different factions and detach uh, sorry detachments of orcs can take advantage of 20 man units of boys so if you have your 20 man units of boys on the shelf but you're playing something a little different consider them they do fine in cult of speed to hunt well i don't know about the hunt sorry take that back uh cult of speed uh green tide bully boys all of that you war horde you can still take advantage of your boys because there's a lot to the game that has to do with sticky objectives and playing the middle of the table uh and as for something we've seen up here he said i wanted to say and we talk about the bully boys we we're gonna talk about bully boys a lot earlier but i'd say gaz is awesome straight up data sheet but the question lies does gaz really need to be in the bullies boys list right i'll let you chat get into that when we cover bully boys i'll start talking about that too but shout out for signing up for event that's fantastic you see you bring in a wagon or is he going to be on foot yeah yeah okay he's about, i don't know if i'd put gas in the wagon um so his third matchup this was his tie right so his tie was the tyrannid unrelenting swarm amending swarm now earlier i mentioned how the dread mob actually does have an issue into uh, swarms this is where you're like oh i hope zod around and the boys don't get taken off the table here because i really need them to deal with all these bodies so let's take a look because i already see the problem with the brood lord we have a death leaper neural tyrant and old one eye so uh 20 man unit of gargoyles two 20 man units of hormigons uh termagant 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 followed by a biovore the gene stealer is now why is the gene stealer is important because this is what's going to be running into either the unit of boys or zagrat's units and just deleting them off the table you actually are glad that you have the grots and zagrat for something like this as you don't want those devastating wounds to really run into anything on your list possibly other than zod if he can stop everything right um yeah you are giving up something for that so there's this and that uh if you do call a wall you might get lucky and the grots might be able to punch out the genius there's probably not but you could dismember them maybe uh it's interesting how that's you know an option but just just funny food for thought we have a 20 man unit of neurogons a neurolictor a psychophage uh psychophage hey shout out to you cheapy uh ripper swarms and a screamer killer kind of fun that he had i'm just gonna say because i don't see uh tyrannids too kind of fun that he has a screamer killer and a psychophage and a neurolictor on this list it is a bit different than the unlenting swarms that i've seen before um the hormigots being able to advance and charge is great and the unit of gargoyles being able to move shoot and then move again also they could actually advance and shoot so 
uh, that could be in a move, which is their 12 inch from Mean Gargoyles, I believe. Then they advance, so it's D6. They shoot. As long as they shoot, they can end up moving. I think they have to hit you once. And then they can get the uh, right in your way, screening you, taking up OC. It's really problematic. Plus old one eye, five of feel no pain built in. He's pretty tough. So as for how I think this went into a draw, um, really the orc player was just smart to bog down the objectives and block out with something like a Morkanoth that's really not going to die in this matchup too reliably. Um, even It really would take one, one eye to get to him. Uh, you do still have the boys to hold and play the game and not really get run over by any of this stuff. And then the loot is if they focus fire stuff on objectives, they can end up killing them you do hope that for some reason the tyranids fail a battle shock test they probably won't because they're rolling 3d6 but you know the big shock attack guns are making them take battle shock so in this matchup this is the one time where you're really hoping those shock attack guns are getting you to take um battle shock tests and failing because on any swarm you just get them to the ROC you're like well there you go I, I, I swung the game and now we're tied so because it was ITC scoring we don't know who actually got the better end of that but it was pretty close so 10 and 10 as I like to say uh, after this he went into to another matchup of his fourth game his fourth game was against the imperial knight so it's interesting because uh imperial knights could be annoying for orcs but he got a straight 20 on this list canis rex is fantastic uh i will pull up his data sheet just because i feel like people should know uh so here we go canis rex which we will see later on the stream he does he may does make a great friend a great ally as well but he does have a great data sheet ability called Chain Breaker, where he scores critical five plus uh, lethal hits, which is you could look at all his weapons and they all have sustain one. So he's getting sustained five pluses whenever he's just going. Of course, he also gets free zero CP strat. He can use that to uh, interrupt. He can use that to uh, tank shock for free. So all in all, he's fantastic. Of course, you can see his dumb damage nine, but even his 2d6 low intensity cannon with blast and sustain one can get lucky and put some good volume into you so he can choose i could do some valuable two damage shots here i can straight up one shot the gorkonaut from here uh it's pretty much hilarious so um uh, other than that canis rex here you go everybody keep an eye out for him he does make for a very popular um sorry i put that in the way he does make for a very popular ally so and, and just straight up on the imperial knights list then we have castle and knight lancer that's another one that gets free tank shock and he likes to take the initiative on you knight galliant knight galliant so i would say this is not the most competitive imperial knight list as it is a bunch of big stompy knights for imperials and sadly there's not the most efficient but it is really fun to see and really killing our caladius which which of course dread mob big shells for bigger gifts things are going your way if they just mess up once on their way you do have the tools to take out those big knights caladius assassin evasor assassin and inquisitorial henchman so he can hopefully play the game but like i said uh as you can see he got 20 points on him which means he did handle it and there might have been you know a little bit of unluckiness on the night player to actually be taken out too early and too quickly uh last but certainly not least he went against the new chaos space marine so i don't know everything about these guys but i do know just enough to say that um as much as this looks like a meme list there were a little bit of things to take in mind that with the warp smith um you can end up getting rerolls to hit on some of these things they have a bunch of different enhancements to give the demon engine to stuff like a vindicator so that they can do um, other abilities i think they have plus one to wound minus one ap in addition he still has three units of warp talents which are great if do not let them get to your ludus and assuming like the corn lord of skulls uh he does shoot pretty pretty dang hard so he could take out something like uh the gorkonaut if he gets lucky he can take out a battle wagon uh, of course with the forge fiends they are only strength 10 but this is where getting additional ap or plus one to wound uh re-rolling hits of course you can they can still demon pack so they can still get lethal they can still get sustained uh so all in all this is actually more deadly than it would seem they are limited with their ability to move around the table but it actually is pretty awesome of a list so uh he did end up playing it in the late game because it actually did have teeth so it was another nice respectable win it's something you have to keep in mind because csm have a deep codex just like us where they can actually flex into a bunch of different uh detachments and the more knowledge you have for each of these kind of detachments the it greatly increases your chance to win because um as you can see even though it's a dread of mob which is actually good counter into all these vehicles and tanks he had an 11 point win very very close almost ended up being in the draw uh so shout out to martin halgrid and Sweet 
Sweden. Whoa, for going 4 on one with the Dread Mob. Uh, showing us that Ludas were definitely the real deal. Uh, we knew that on paper and mathematically they were, but in practicality, how were you playing on the table? And it seems like putting them in reserves, even jumping out of trucks. Uh, if you can put them on terrain and get plunging fire, my goodness, you will really get the most value out of them. But all in all, the shock attack gun is where it needs to be at. We finally seen the Big Mac making his appearance. Could flex into the mech guns as we've seen on this list before. Uh, I'll show up the list one more time before we move on. I'll show the list of Martin Halgrid's list one more time before we move on to our next list. But he had Zagrod, 20 Gretchen, 20 Man Unit of Boys, and a War Boss. I, like I said, I think there is a flex with the Big Mac, um, either Mech Guns or with the boys. I can understand both, and I'm happy to see him regardless, as nobody really took him that serious, but we all wanted to be. Uh, shout out to the Zap Gun on this battle wagon, though. That's He intentionally brought that. So, Martin Halgrid, uh, thanks for playing the Dread Mob and, and making us orcs know that there's something out there more than the Bully Boys. If you enjoyed the clip, Check out the full video here. If you'd like to see more tactics, click here. Let's get stuck in, lads!